that got me uh, a $500 sale versus a $100 sale, right, or something like that. We're saying, did I make a sale or did I not make a sale? Success being defined in this case, if we made the sale, non-success if we did not. If you're talking about a coin flipping situation, then we, we're, we only have heads or tails. So, so the question is, in a coin flipping situation, did, the success would be defined as either heads or tails, whichever you wanna choose, non-success would be the other. Four, the probability of quote success, which is gonna be represented by P, is the same for each outcome. So when you talk about a coin flipping situation, then if it's a fair coin, the probability of success, 50% each coin flip. If you're talking about a sales call situation or a coin that is not fair, for example, then you, you could, the sales call, you're gonna have the probability of success for each call is usually much lower, if you're, especially if you're cold calling for sales. You might only have like a 10% or even lower probability of making a sale on any particular call, but that 10% we're imagining would be constant for each of the calls. So if these conditions are met, then you could have a binomial type of distribution and we can use this equation. We're not gonna go into the equation in too much detail here because I don't wanna be too intimidated by the equation because the idea would be that once the equation has been figured out to give us the curve of a binomial distribution, then we can apply that if we find that, that being applicable in our actual real life situation, then we can apply that using our Excel functions and our Excel uh, graphs. And if you wanted to type this in, of course, you can go to the insert and you can go into uh, the equation and then you can make an ink equation we've seen in prior presentations. So I won't do the whole thing again here, but just know any Microsoft product, you can kind of type in a mathematical equation this way and that way, uh, you can you can represent that equation in uh, in Excel. So 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 uh, or any 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 Microsoft product. So it's a kind of a new nice tool to have. So let's go on over and approximate some data. So we're going to have the number uh, is going to be n, and then we've got p is going to be the percent of of likelihood p is the same for each outcome which which is the 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 probability of success for each outcome so let's imagine what we want to do now is plot out the binomial distribution and make a graph from it and see how the graph changes if we change the variables such as n and p as we do this it might be useful to envision a scenario so let's imagine that we have that sales call scenario where n represents the number of calls and p represents the probability of success success in this case being that we made a sale on the sales call failure being that we don't have a sale on the sales call so if i was to plot this out we're going to say that x is on the left so X is gonna be zero through five. Notice that this sequence that we're putting into Excel, I could put a zero and a one and then use the fill handle to copy it down to five or just type in five. But if we use this sequence function, uh, we could say equals sequence and then the number of rows is gonna be this number five plus one because I actually wanna add a zero and then comma comma to the starting point of zero. The reason this sequence function is useful is because sometimes it's faster if you have a whole lot of columns and also you can change the number of rows automatically now by changing this n. So if I change this n, this will change automatically. So that's kind of a useful tool sometimes to use within Excel. The P of X is going to be our